Well, hi, good morning. Thanks so much for joining me here in my shop. On a beautiful, another beautiful sunny day. Pretty cold out, but very sunny. First day of spring, March 20th. So the situation with this radio is actually pretty good. Leaving short wave aside, seems to be largely working. I'm really not sure if there's much I can do to improve its performance. Um, so I think one thing I can do though is I can go through and test these tubes. Now, even though the radio works, uh, that's a pretty good indication all the tubes are good. But I'll go ahead and test them anyway. Maybe we'll find one weak one or something like that. So I'm going to get busy on that right away. So this is a dual tube, or twin tube. 12.50, so check them up out here. Hello. Oh boy. Okay, well that's way over 12.50. The other half of the tube, we just do that. Give it another run. A little weaker, but not bad. Well over the, uh, well over the reject point, so let's do this again. There we are. Hey, poor tube tester. I've worn them out. So 1180 and it's up around 13. So not incredibly strong. But certainly functional. Okay. Right in the same area. 1170 right up here. Right on over. 910, so just under the 1000, about here. Well over. And it's up in the diodes okay range. It's up in the diodes okay range. And then we do uh, K2, K2, leave the G alone. Uh, 1000, and uh, reject point. Well, it's in here. Diode's okay. It's good. All good. Very good. That's quite the glowing tube there. Now we're getting down to some output tubes here, I think. What have we got here? So we got one tube in a shield. Oh, up there. One tube in a shield. And one tube not. The shield is screwed down to the chassis. The shield, this is interesting. This, this, so one of the problems with shields is they, they make the tubes hotter. They, they don't actually cool them off at all. You're putting another sleeve on it, whether it's metal or not. It's not helping. This one, you see what they've done? They've spaced it and they've filled it full of holes. And then in order to make good contact, they've screwed it down. You see a screw there. Well, that's, that's a fair bit of effort to shield uh, one tube in this radio. What's so special about it? is uh, 84. E, I think it's EF84. That's an output tube, isn't it? What's this one? EL84. That's two EL84s. Uh, well, I just always assumed that because one had a shield and one didn't, they can't be the same tube twice. So two EL84s. That's a fair bit of pumping power here. So that means this is a push-pull output. Hmm. It's got 
Buah. P -p part of the Buah is the size of the uh, uh, transformer here, the output transformer. That's fairly hefty. Not really hefty. Okay, so EL84. EL84. Okay, it's the same as a 6BQ5. And you know, I think I knew that. If I just stopped to think a little bit. So this tube and its brother work together to drive the speaker. And these, these tubes uh, work hard. Output tubes have to work hard. That's what they're designed, you know, from an efficiency point of view. You want the tube working hard. This one's glowing like a son of a gun also. Just like the uh, last one. Hmm. Makes me wonder if it's really 6.3 volts coming out of here. Okay. We warmed up now. Oh, short test. Since these tubes work hard, their cathodes wear out earlier than the other tubes. Fourteen sixty, so fourteen sixty is pretty well straight up. Look at that! That's fantastic. I think I'm gonna grab this. Nope, not hot yet. Whew, look at the glow in there. Now it's a powerful heater because it, it's trying uh, because the job of this tube is to put a lot of current through. So you need a pretty hot cathode to allow for the uh, the heavy current, and the heavy current wears the cathode out. But not this one. Let's see about his brother. That's very, very good. Now why would they spend so much time shielding one of them, but not the other? Isn't that kind of odd? Kind of odd to me. Let me get it in here. It would almost look to me like what's happened is they designed this radio and built a few and then discovered there was a problem, which they solved with the shield. EL84. EL84. Did I say 89? Did, did I say 89 before? 84. 84. 84. The push-pull arrangement means uh, one tube is amplifying the upper half of the uh, of the AC signal, and the other tube is amplifying the lower half. And then the two of them are combined in a sense using a, a center tap transformer. And as far as the speaker knows, there's one tube doing it; doesn't know there's two. The benefit there's a couple of benefits. One is uh, well, you get the power of two tubes, so better than one tube, you get two tubes. But the technique that's used results in a uh, reduction in uh, the uh, idle current that's flowing in these tubes when there's no signal, when there's no sound. Uh, that's another little bit of an efficiency advantage. And I think you get reduced distortion, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't bet on that, on that one. Okay, how you doing, tube? Da -da -da -da. You're doing great. Wow, okay, so these are two very good tubes. That's a good thing. I think these are a little expensive these days. Uh, 6PQ5? Maybe not. Maybe not. Um, I have quite a few 6PQ5s myself. Okay, so what have we done? We've tested the tubes. Oh, all except for one. Um, okay, so that's the EZ81. Let me take a moment here and see if I can find a setting for that. Okay, so this guy, he should, it's a rectifier. So a rectifier, a rectifier has to come way up here, up above, a little bit above halfway. Whang, way over there. So, you know, this, this adds up to something I kind of concluded without saying it about this radio, and that is that it has not, it's not high mileage. No one's played this a lot. This must have never had a daily use scenario. It must have just been an occasional use thing. 
So again, why, why, why shield just one of these two tubes? Why, why, why? Well, I mean, they're almost in the same place in the radio. Very odd. Very odd to me why there isn't a shield here. Now, there's no place to have a shield, screw it down. There's nothing missing. It's not that the shield is missing. And why are you shielding an output tube? Output tubes are, you know, they're getting substantial signals. A little bit of noise shouldn't. Shouldn't really even factor. Here is. I'll put it back on because it's here for a reason. For a reason I don't know. You can see how concerned they were putting this on the tube. They, 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 this is an unusual tube shield um, designed to not cause the tube to get hotter. Because you know, there's no tolerance for more heat in these tubes. These tubes are skin burners. All tubes are a little bit burner, but this one, an uh, unforgiving skin burner. Okay, so we're at the situation here where uh, if performance is the issue, the only thing that's really left here is an alignment. And uh, I am really not too interested in even trying it, even a little bit on here. Um, because I think its performance is, is, is pretty good as it is, and chances are I'm just going to reduce its performance. Why don't we give it a one last, we'll give it a performance check here, a good one this time. I'll try and get a good FM antenna on it, and, and uh, we'll give it a good check here. Well, after giving it some thought, I. I, I decided a little more testing might be in order. So um, I have my oscilloscope connected to the speaker here. So we can see what kind of signal is reaching the speaker. And then I'm using this FM signal generator here uh, to produce a signal, a nice, clean, strong signal for the radio to receive. So I'm all set to go here. So the output of the signal generator is as low as it goes. The signal generator is operating. The output is connected right to the antenna terminals on the radio. The volume is down. The FM is selected. There we go. A little issue uh, hooking up the oscilloscope here to the output of the speaker. I uh, was concerned that maybe there's a ground on one side which is quite common. So I poked with my ohmmeter for a little while and decided, okay, maybe it's this one. So I hooked it up. Nothing bad has happened. <laughs> we survived that. Okay, so up here we're on AC on the scope here. Nothing there. Uh, we have still have the speaker hooked up. Okay, what do we get? Okay, it's a really nice FM sound there. Great, now we're going to tune to around 100 on the FM dial. Oh my gosh, that's right where it is. It's right there. So the right, signal generator puts out at 100 plus or minus a little bit. There it is. Okay, so this just a comparison. Now, that's a radio with no decent antenna at all. whopper of a signal here. Um, and I cannot turn it down any lower easily. Um, let, let, let's leave it up there for now. I'll turn the volume down. That's how I'll solve that problem. Tune it in. You can certainly see the magic eye reacting. You turn it down blowing my ears off. Well, what I see here is a really nice looking sine wave. And what I hear in my ears is a really nice sound. Um, let's just tune a wee bit here. It's a very, very strong signal. It's doing a really nice job with it. 
Uh, we'll try some higher frequencies here. That's five. Five thousand hertz. Still a nice looking sine wave. It's not clipped on the top, doesn't have a funny bump in it. There's nothing going on. It sounds fine. So, um, let me take one lead off here. I'll try to weaken the FM signal. That didn't weaken it much, did it? I'll take the other one off. It's definitely weakened it. I'm going to hold it up. What is that on the scope? I have a little bit of trouble seeing it from so far away. Uh, it's a strange, strange shape there. I still hear the tone. So it's still being picked up. from here. Yeah, that's, that's having a little bit of an effect. Okay, through the air onto next to no antenna. Let me drop the frequency here. And the volume. So we have no connection, just the antenna in this radio amounts to those pins sticking out there. No antenna. Now I'm going to attempt to make my scope trigger. Don't count on it. it should trigger on this. And it doesn't want to trigger. Okay, but it won't trigger, so I can slow it down with this guy, though. There we are. There, so get it. This just looks perfectly fine. Now, this is a weak signal, uh, and the magic eye is uh, barely, uh, barely moving here. Let me check. Well, so the thing about the magic eye is that it's a very important instrument in a radio like this. It's reading a very important voltage. Let's watch it here as I tune. So you can hear there's a real sweet spot in this radio. Uh, when I'm tuning it, just kind of get an idea of what I'm doing with my hand, which is... Mm. So I'm listening to it. If I tune a little this way or that way, you'll hear a harmonic show up pretty, pretty quick. Right there. And right there. Very interesting result on the oscilloscope. Very, very interesting. Can you see it from here? I think so. What's the light you're seeing there? You're seeing my laundry rooms, what you're seeing. There we go. So the, the funny thing that's going on on the scope and the screen there, assuming that maybe it doesn't even look this way on the recording, there appears to be a, a second sweep kind of going over it. That's just an effect of, uh, call it a shutter effect with the camera. So sine wave looks great. Now I'm going to tune slightly this way and that, and you can watch what happens to it. You see something happen at the top part of the signal. If I tune the other direction just a touch, now the same thing's happening on the bottom part. So there's clearly a sweet spot in there and it is not very big. It's maybe maybe two 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 degrees if even that in the knob. Um so how strong is this signal compared to regular signals? So you can see what the magic eye is doing. It's come up to here. Very useful for tuning. Just make that bar as high as possible. So the question is now, can a regular radio station get up to this level? So I'm going to uh, we can leave the signal generator going. I'm going to try to reconnect this antenna. And this will probably cause the uh, signal to go way up. Way up now. 
And you can see on the scope too what it's done on the scope. Give you an idea of the audio level. Full full screen. Full screen. Now we're gonna find a station to compare. Why is it up? What's going on there? Hey, Sean. Don't forget, every week you can win big cash prizes from the comfort of your home. Can I? Delta Bingo at Home is live on YouTube every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday with a minimum of $10,000 to be won. We've awarded hundreds of thousands of dollars to players all across the province. Okay, so I'm watching the scope here. Let's slow it down. I'm looking for any flat peaks. Any peaks that appear to be flattened off. I'm listening to we it. We know you've been spending a lot of time at home, and it's natural to want to update your space. Lazy Boy Barry at 76 Barry View Drive. definitely a touch of a distortion in it. Quality and style of Lazy Boy into your home. The S's our Boxing Week sale in March sound messy. So big that we're extending it another week. We have huge inventory ready for immediate delivery or store pickup. Shop Lazy Boy Barry's Boxing Week sale at 76 Barry View Drive and scratch and save up to an extra 25% off your entire purchase, including clearance. That's nice. Got to get this dial turn, turned within like Barry, half a percent of the key you want. spot. With the absence of gravity, light, and sound, you're free to go that anywhere nice. the mind will take you. And rest assured, when you get out of the tank, it'll feel Signal like you just spent a week at your happy place. One hour is it's all you right need. Right on this line here. Okay, back to the uh, float tank berry. Let's go. Back to this guy. And it's, it's slightly above. That's it. So the receiver is receiving the test signal slightly, whoops, what are you been staring way up there for? Slightly stronger on the magic eye than the radio signal we were just listening to. All this is telling me that the key thing to make this radio sound good is to have a really good FM antenna that gives the radio a good chance to do what it's doing now, which has worked quite well. Uh, now there's a built-in FM antenna in the uh, in the console. That might be enough. That might be enough. Um, there's not much else I can do with my fancy uh, FM uh, signal generator because it's really designed to help out with a stereo. And this is not a stereo unit; it's a mono unit. Very good. Um, this says, Jim, don't fiddle with the alignment. It's just too risky. You know, if I had good instructions in English, I might I might think more about it. But uh, I think what we're proving here is there's only a little bit to gain. You still need a good antenna anyway. I think that's the end of the road for this radio. I don't think I should try any alignment stuff with it at all. Nothing. I think we're good. Now there there, there was there was there was one capacitor in there. Um, let's let's just take another look at this capacitor here. So, scope off. Let me take the speakers off. Put this guy up. The the capacitor change may be enough to improve the, the to expand the sweet spot in the FM tuning a little bit, and to make it uh, sweeter, a sweeter sweet spot. Thing is, oh my gosh! Like the thing is, if it's easy to change, then it should be done. I think that's the way I should come about this. And there it is up there. You know, that's not going to be too hard to change.
for the size of it. It's going to be a two, three, four, something like that, microfarads. Yeah, let's do it because this is a low risk in that uh, the worst case is it just doesn't benefit the radio at all. Uh, there's not much chance of me ruining the, uh, the goodness that's there already. hidden under all these wires and you don't want to move like all this stuff here you don't want to move it around you want to try to get in there and uh, there's a sneaky way in here this is usually where I cut two or three wires at once by accident get in there Oh, where'd you go? It's making a run for it. There it is. You got him. New Berger is the name of it. Two microfarads, 70, 80 volts. So we're going to put a two microfarad back in there. And uh, you know that might just, just be enough to improve things a bit. Okay, so what it's worth, I'm going to test this guy with this tester here. Let's see what it says. 3,300 nanofarads, so that's 0 0.003. It's supposed to be 0 0.002. Um, VLOS almost 5% and ESR 10 ohms. So I don't really know what the ESR thing is all about. It has to do with teeny tiny components in modern electronics. Here's the replacement here. This is a 2.2. 2.12, so it's, it's close. A loss is under a percent. ESR, 14 ohms. Um, Effective series resistance, I think is what that means. It means it, it thinks there's a resistor worth 14 ohms in series with the uh, the lead here. So that it's suggesting there's something going on in the capacitor. Um, I don't know what to make of that. It's not, I think this is going to be fine. Okay, so we're going to stick it in. And uh, good thing I remembered which way the polarity was. No, I didn't. I did not, I did not, what a dummy, I didn't look at which way this was in. There. Well. It was this way. Positive at the top. Positive at the top. Okay, so I'm going to put this guy in, and we'll see what happens. Okay, it's time for another test. I've got the capacitor installed right there. Okay, I'm going to hook up the uh, FM antenna here. We'll start with that. speaker. Might as well throw the scope back on. Okay, there we go. So the objective of this test is to listen to an FM station now that the capacitor has changed. Find out if the sweet spot is bigger, the sound is louder, if it works at all. Okay, we'll go on. Plugged in. Okay. There we go. Dim bulb behavior is normal. FM 
FM. And uh, what are we going to get? So I have a, a regular folded dipole FM antenna, but look, it's just laying on my bench here. Okay, so this is picking up the signal generator without a direct connection. It seems a little bigger to me. Let's go find an FM station now. Today, I have 13. Tonight, clear skies, move minus 5 with a windchill feeling like minus 7. Tomorrow, sunny skies, high 15. And Monday, sunny skies, high of 14. In Barry, Midland, and Aurelia, it's plus 7. Pure Country is live on location. Live. Here we go. Here's Neil. Week station. I'm Cameron Cosman, and this is my music. I wanted to close out the program today with an homage to one of the great cellists of the 20th century who just it, recently see, passed away. You still hear noise in the signal, which means the signal strength is not enough to activate the limiter. In other words, if the limiter's limits are here. You don't want a signal coming in much bigger, so it ends up getting limited to this. But if you're bringing in a signal that's smaller, where's my fingers here? Here we are. No limitation takes place, and if there's noise in here, you're going to hear it. That's what's happening with this radio. Now, it may not have a limiter stage. And I really think that the first contact with these suites... But then that's the whole secret to why FM doesn't react to things like lightning and other and typical so electrical noises that you hear on AM. It's that limiter circuit. Award-winning kibasa. Could be habit-forming. So I'm watching the eye very carefully while I'm tuning. We're sitting pretty at each right across the board, Oshawa, Toronto, and Brampton now. There's weather in more at KX Country, not FM. As promised, the news from Chris Young with Kane Brown. Famous friends. Custom for smaller. Jobs. Need last minute solutions? Not a problem. At our tech. In box suite number six in D major, played by the great honor Bilsman. <laughs> I think it's all about the antenna here. Great. Well, really, I think what I got to do, this is this is the difficult part with these kinds of projects. I'm at the point now where I'm not sure I can do much more in here. I need to put it back in its console, hook it up to its own speakers, hook it up to its own antenna. But that's a lot of work to get it back in there, only to find out, oh, it's got to come back in the shop again. So that's why I'm a little hesitant. So I'm going to stop at this point. I'm going to let things percolate in my head for a bit. And uh, I think it's heading. I think it's heading back. Got to clean the glass up and get all that ready. Good. Well, I'm in the middle of cleaning the glass here, and uh, discovered something unusual. I've never noticed this before. And only after cleaning it does it become kind of visible. Um, just looking in the camera here. So if you look right here, you can see something can see something coming around like that and then if you look all across the top here you can see a, a line see it right here it's quite visible right here there's a piece of scotch tape or something like scotch tape starting here and it runs right over the dial to here and there's another one here here to here and there's another one down here 
So they've applied tape over here, here, just three places. Very inconsistent. The tape runs right over the FM thing here. Here's the end of the tape here. What would that be there for? The problem with it is it, it's now it's collected dirt on its edge, which I don't think I can get rid of. It was dirty enough that even if there was dirt on this edge, you wouldn't have seen it before. Yeah. So at a glance, you won't you won't notice it because there's so many other horizontal lines on here that your eye can't pick it up. But actually, it's cleaning away kind of nice now. Isn't that strange? What would they do that for? You know, you think if there's print under it, you would put tape over it to protect it. But there's no print under it. I don't know. It's just another one of those mysteries never to be solved. See, I'd like to get the engineer here and say, hey, what's with the tape? And hear what he had to say. I don't know. Well, what could he possibly say? We had some excess scotch tape, so we applied it on these radios. I, I, I don't know. What would you say? We found that people were always pointing and scuffing it up, so we it's just to protect the fingernail. That's stupid. I don't, I don't know. I can't think of anything. I cannot think of a thing here. Now there's a little window here, which you can kind of see, and behind it it has some tape put in to block it because it's a window for something that's like a feature that's not in this radio. So they just taped it at the back. But the tape has uh, flaked a fair bit. Okay, I think it's ready to go. I'm not going to bother trying to fix the uh, tone control markers here. One of them sort of working, the other one not much at all, but it's just a little too much effort to try to s solve those things, which nobody ever even knows are there. So. Not bad. Too bad for the short wave. Who knows? Maybe I'll put the whole thing back together and the short wave will start working. Think so? No. I don't think so. I think that's it. I think that's about all I can do here. Aside from cleaning up. Oh, yeah. And, and the desk. Discant. Discant. That's right. This can't sound right. This can't be pleasing. Okay. Humor's bad. Into the cabinet you go. Well, it's about mid-afternoon now and I've just been getting the cabinet ready and I'm just really ready to take the uh, chassis here and send it back to the cabinet when I noticed, oh, son of a gun, that wire is separated again. And then, this caught my eye here. This is loose. And you can tell from the paint it's really supposed to be up here. This makes a difference. Out here is different than there. So a good thing I spotted this. This one, that's loose too. I'll assume that this is in the right spot though. Good. So just a little dab of this. Shoe glue. I don't think I've tried it on a shoe yet. Really, I'm getting everything ready, especially me. You know, lights, tools, everything in position. 
because when you bring this in, you can't start thinking about it then. Right? You've got this big thing in your hand. You've got to have already thought it out. At, at least get close, you know, uh, because it, the risk of a jackpot here is really, really high.
That's better. In the future, if somebody wants to revert to screw in bulbs, there's the socket. same place. they work. Not much more. Power's not on yet. There we go. Both are on. Okay, that's it. That's all we needed. Good. Now I'll get back to putting this back in the uh, back in the cabinet. <laughs> 